Shrug family, this week on Barbell Shrug, we have a massive announcement. Coach Travis Mash is joining us. Rapid health optimization. It's about time. Mash showed up on his first episode of Barbell Shrug like eight years ago. I met him, I can't remember when we joined forces, but in about 2019, we started recording a lot of shows, doing a little traveling together, went to Sweden, we made barbells at Aleko. In that time, he went and got his master's degree in exercise physiology, which is super cool. It's been on this hunt through Barbell Shrug together. We've never been able to like professionally align ourselves in coaching and business. We've done a few things together as far as kind of like him writing programs for us. But now, now it's real. Very, very excited about this. Uh, but having him be able to come in and be the strength and conditioning coach for all the athletes that roll through our program. Not only do I feel like the, the business picked up one of the best minds in the strength and conditioning world, but I love Travis Mash. He's a phenomenal human being. One thing that's very cool about this show and doing it with him for as long as we have, you get to like know people, you get to know their families, you travel with them, we, we get to go do stuff together. The show's on Zoom, but we have a date every Tuesday that we gotta go and check in and talk about fitness and talk about health, talk about the things that are important to us in life. And this show has made me, has allowed me to be in touch with very cool people. Um, and over the hundreds of interviews, we were able to make Travis a host and add a ton of value to the show and also become really good friends. And our families all know each other, we've all traveled together and, and we, we've, we've spent time together. And it's, a, it's very cool to, to be in the same sphere and finally be able to align. I feel like the force is strong here. We've got all the right people and this is a very cool moment. So please get over to rapidhealthreport.com if you would like to check out what's going on at Rapid Health Optimization, and there's a free case study over there. Timothy Jones, that man came into the program with hereditary cholesterol issues that were never going to be solvable, and then we cut his cholesterol in half, got him completely ripped in the process. Men's Health and Apple News actually ran a case study on him because it was very, very cool to see how, how far we were able to take his programming. So if you want to read that case study, head over to rapidhealthreport.com. Travis Mash, love you, buddy. We're excited to have you on the team, and let's get into the show. Welcome to Barbell Shrug. I'm Anders Mar Doug Larson, Coach Travis Mash. Nobody else today. No one else is invited. Just a bunch yeah. of homies hanging out talking about the fitness. Number one on the docket today, Coach Travis Mash. How long have we known you now? I've known, let's see. You still, when was the first time you were on mm -hmm. Barbell Shrug? I just had a time hop from one of our first episodes that was 10 years. 10 so years. We, so presumably 11 or 12 years. We, you probably hopped yeah. on the show within a year or two of knowing us, for sure. Yeah. Were you yeah. coaching Bledsoe before you were on the show? Right around the same time, pretty much. Let's see, uh, I met him 2013. It was the uh, American Open when it started snowing in, in Dallas, of all places. It was like an ice a get in, you know, it was crazy. Yeah. So I met him. So it took us it took us 12 years to officially work together. Yeah, dude. I'm Seems like a long time, right? I know. I was so pumped. You know, when uh, who was it? Was it you Anders asked me or Doug? No, Doug asked. One of y'all asked me. I was so pumped. Yeah. yeah. We did we did a little bit together uh when we were doing the one ton challenge. Oh yeah, right yeah, we did. <laughs> right yeah. before COVID. Remember, we we yeah. tried to start an event company like right before covid two months before covid that was like yes. the worst decision of all time COVID shit <laughs> yeah, all over you, you did man. you did write the programming for the one ton challenge which still is phenomenal that. programming if anybody wants to get just insanely strong on the the six big lifts between powerlifting and weightlifting that was fun yeah do y'all still sell that i mean i don't know we have it we haven't promoted it in a long time but it's, it's still it's still available yeah. in the the ether of the internet you can find it i see it come through on our uh on our receipts on a, yeah. on a somewhat random basis. I'm like, damn, there's yeah. some people out there still getting jacked. You um, guys got, the Rapid is crazy, man. The team, how do y'all do that? You have such an amazing team you've assembled. Like, I hope you're not asking me. You've been here <laughs> for three weeks now. You should know not to ask me that. Doug's the one that does it all. Doug's uh, the one that knows yeah. all the people. Yeah, man. Doug is really good uh, about the whole process shit. Yeah. Sure. I've been in business long enough to know that it's it's not that easy. <laughs> it's not like I could just do this with, with anything. Like, you know, yeah. Barbell Shrug worked out really well and, and we crushed for, for many, many years and are still doing our thing. And and now Rapid has been crushing for a couple of years and it's grown very well. But uh, I've tried many, many things over the years. Most of them did not work. Uh, every once in a while, you get something that does work and you just uh, you make hay while the sun shines. So Rapid's, Rapid's been doing phenomenal. You know, I got a great team 
Anders, me, Dan, Andy, uh, you know, came together and we all have our, our own unique roles and we, uh, we don't cross over very much at all. Like we have our own unique thing that we do within the company. We all stay in our lane. And then, you know, luckily we, we have a, a gangster service that has been absolutely smashing for our clients. And, you know, the more we sell, the, the bigger we can grow the team. I remember y'all asking me about, or telling me about Andy, uh, is doing this crazy testing for athletes. He's right around. Mm-hmm. I was taking this class, athlete monitoring. I remember totally. And then it was like three and a half years ago. Yeah. Like we're, we're s- November, like November 3rd or something like that. So we're, we're coming up right on three years of it, of the first client joining. Um, but Doug and I went and did it like four or five months before that. And we're mm-hmm. like, Oh, this is like a real thing. We're done. Yeah. We're done. And, uh, at Bledsoe's event, the Strong Coach Summit, or what I think that's what it was called in Austin. Mm-hmm. Doug and I were like, damn, I feel amazing right now. We need to go do this thing. Yeah. And there we go, three years later. Correct. Mm-hmm. I remember you uh, guys really, and that really was only a fraction of what it is now. That was like that was like the the 1.0 version. We're like, we're now on, I don't know, three or 4.0, whatever it is. And it's 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 scaled up and gotten much more uh comprehensive since then. I mean, back then it was just Dan and Andy running labs on people. They didn't have any, like, the coaching side of it. There were no subject matter experts. There were no nutritionists or physical therapists or behavioral health coaches it's or sleep crazy, specialists. Yeah. Like, now we have a whole team of people that that work with our clients um, as opposed to just run labs and give people advice and suggestions based on labs, which, of it's course, so is perfect. very I important. Don't feel but forced. It's, it's, yeah, it's so Sorry. much more than that now. Yeah, I, just, I don't feel, you know, it's cool because I don't feel forced to do things that I don't necessarily feel like the expert, you know, like, in the past, I'll be coaching someone and I will try to, you know, help people with nutrition. I mean, obviously I know nutrition, but I don't know it like a nutritionist who their yeah. whole focus is nutrition. It's like, it feels so good. It's like when someone asks me a question, I'm like, oh, we have this other person that's way better than me at this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. This is the this is the first business I feel like um, we've, we've only like looked for the world-class solution. Yeah. It's crazy. Like yeah. not just a nutritionist, but who's like really worked with like really high level people yeah. um, and can, I mean, a genius. For, for every single person that comes through, there's like, and this is just the nutrition side of things. There's like an hour presentation of like, we could do a podcast on nutrition, but like yeah, for every single client that comes through having a 60 minute video presentation of what their current nutrition is where it's lacking, how to improve it. And here are the exact meal plans to get all the way calorically macronutrients, micronutrients to an optimal level. So you can go slay is wild. Awesome. And then to be able to do that for behavioral health and sleep and stress management, um, the physical therapy side of things, like it's wild. It's crazy. Yeah. Dude, every business that I've ever been a part of where we had any level of success, I've also been like the target customer. Like when I was running a CrossFit gym, like yeah. I I wanted to be like the best athlete I could be. I was competing in MMA at the time. I, I wanted to be strong, fit, mobile, and in every every sense of the world, so I could be a very well rounded athlete. And so, running a CrossFit gym, teaching people gymnastics and weightlifting and powerlifting, and just you know training in general, it was what I wanted to do all day, every day. And so, because I was interested in it. I was more interested in teaching it because I was more interested in learning about it at the time. Like the more you can be your own customer in a business, the more you're just going to be all in on that business. And it's going to be like an extension of, of, of your life. It's going to be an extension of your personality and your temperament and, and your goals and just the, the life that you're surrounding yourself with. If you have a business around that, it's easy to be in business and to work all day because you don't feel like you're working all day. You're just living your life. And that, that, that has then scaled from owning a gym, to running shrug, which was, which was very similar. Like my life, I wanted to be someone who was just traveling around with my friends, lifting weights and talking about training with, with cool people that knew a lot about training. And that was the easy business to run. It still is an easy business to run, not because it's easy to do, but my interest is so high and it's so enjoyable for me with who I am that it just doesn't feel like work. Same thing when we moved on to the diesel dad, like I had kids, I was in a new stage of life. Now I still wanted to be strong and fit and, and whatever else, but I had like these new constraints of having these, you know, three little monsters run around where, where I, <laughs> I, I wanted to be fit, but I had, I had a limited amount of time to get it done. And so, you know, we created Emom aesthetics and, and all the other training programs that were involved with the diesel dad, because I, again, was the target customer. And then now fast forward to rapid. 
part of the reason that we decided to get together with Dan and Andy and create this like super program was because as I'm getting older, like my goals again have shifted. Like I just want to have like high energy, high libido, uh, again, strength, speed, power, et cetera, but be as lean as possible. I want to age well is, is the reality of it. And the medical mm -hmm. side of it, running, running labs and working with specialists and whatnot, like all that stuff is available, but it was all siloed into like, you had to have all these like separate individual specialists. There's nowhere you could go or nowhere I could go, nowhere I could find where I could have this like one stop shop where I could work with all the different people I wanted to work with, where they were all talking to each other and they all knew each other. And I was getting one comprehensive plan without having, I, I don't need a strength coach specifically. Of course, everyone can have a coach and that would be helpful. But, you know, if I had a, a strength coach and I had a nutritionist and I had a physical therapist and I had uh, a functional medicine practitioner and, so and I had a, beha a behavioral health coach, like if I had all these different separate specialists, even if I had them all, they're not talking to each other. They're all giving me different advice that's potentially conflicting and it's just a headache. And so once, once we were able to meet with Dan and Andy and, and realize that they, they have this like unique part of it with the, the labs side of it, with the functional medicine practitioner and a muscle scientist looking at labs, giving hyper specific recommendations, we had the coaching side of it. And then we get, we could come and layer in all the other specialists to make this like comprehensive super program. And I was the client. I knew exactly what I was looking for. And we basically just built it for ourselves, knowing other people in our same similar situation would definitely want it. It was, it was a, it was a no brainer. And now we work all day on this like very complex. I want to invite you to come over to rapidhealthreport.com. When you get to rapidhealthreport.com, you will see an area for you to opt in in which you can see Dan Garner read through my lab work. Now, you know that we've been working at Rapid Health Optimization on programs for optimizing health. Now, what does that actually mean? It means in three parts, we're going to be doing a ton of deep dive into your labs. That means the inside out approach. So we're not going to be guessing your macros. We're not going to be guessing uh, the total calories that you need. We're actually going to be doing all the work to uncover everything that you have going on inside you. Nutrition, supplementation, sleep. And then we're going to go through and, and analyze your lifestyle. Dr. Andy Galpin is going to build out a lifestyle protocol based on the severity of your concerns. And then we're going to also build out all the programs that go into that based on the most severe things first. This truly is a world-class program and we invite you to see step one of this process by going over to rapidhealthreport.com. You can see Dan reading my labs, the nutrition and supplementation that he has recommended that has radically shifted the way that I sleep, the energy that I have during the day, my total testosterone level, and just my, my ability to trust and have confidence in my health going forward. I really, really hope that you're able to go over to rapidhealthreport.com, watch the video of my labs, and see what is possible. And if it is something that you are interested in, please schedule a call with me on that page. Once again, it's rapidhealthreport.com, and let's get back to the show. Doug just laid out like the absolute best way to go build the highest level program you can of all the people that he wants to be training with and, and consulting. You actually hire all Dude. the people, Doug. You actually like have all of our team members on your team writing your programs for you like you're you're working with our physical therapist in the program right yeah um, yeah that's probably my, my main person right now is our, our physical therapist she she writes all my my pt um you know basically like what i do before my training she handles that side of things um just clearing up aches and pains like i do jujitsu rib injuries are super common in jujitsu and as an example with me like i've had i've had three or four like back to back to back my spinal rotation is very poor. Oh. Like I've been very flexible my entire life. I did gymnastics growing up. I could do the splits until I was like 30. Um, but doing, you know, weightlifting and powerlifting my entire, basically my entire life um, and almost no rotational sports, like my spinal or thoracic rotation is super locked up. So in jiu-jitsu, when I get cranked to the side, oh, yeah. instead of my spine just rotating, <laughs> it doesn't. And then my ribs fucking pop. And that's, Man. it's already a common thing in jujitsu and it's happened to me many times and it's painful for all the obvious reasons. Uh, not just when it happens, but doing breathing and coughing and sneezing and getting out of bed. Like it yeah. makes everything hurt, especially wrestling. I think it's a big mistake <laughs> a lot of adults make is not doing any yeah. rotational movement. You know, that no one does anything in the transverse plane. And then they're like, let's go do golf. And then guaranteed yeah. 90% of the people, I hurt my back because they play golf out of the blue. It's like, we need to do rotation, all of us. 
me too. Yeah. Whether... A lot of my rotation is very stability based. It, it wasn't really mobility based. Um, and I think that's contributed to these rib injuries. So anyway, to cycle back to Anders' original comment, yeah, I've been, I've been working with our physical therapist to, to specifically to clear that up, plus a handful of other things I got going on because I'm always dinged up from just doing jiu-jitsu now in my 40s for the last 20 years. Um, but yeah, she's my main person. Uh, Anders, I know you were working with uh, with our, our buddy Mike T. Nelson on, on cardio-related yeah. things there for a Dude, while. I got my VO2 yeah. max tested this week, or last Friday. What is your VO2 yeah. max? Oh, yeah, what is it? 53.1. Wow. Dude. That's, that's, the, that's really good. When I was yeah. like fighting MMA, mine my, my was only like 56. And I was like, oh, in much better shape than I am right now. I'm, I'm afraid to do it. Now, now, I, uh, now I'm definitely afraid to do it. I'm going to be embarrassed. I went, <laughs> uh, w- one year ago, before I started working with Mike, it was 51. So a whole year working hard to get two points to go from super superior to extremely superior. I mean, it's incredible. Anything that they say is superior on the sheet is like the coolest marketing thing ever. It's like, who came up with that? It's like, bad, not bad, good, better, elite, superior. You're like, it's how not did they superiorly come up with that one? shitty is what mine is, yeah. So. Uh, dude, you should take the bike test one. It, this one was like way harder. I remember last, the last time, a year ago when I did it and coming off the, the, coming off the treadmill and going, feel like i had a lot more to give here not realizing like i was at a mark max heart rate but this time the dude cranked me up to like a level 10 on the incline and my mm. legs were just gassed so i felt like i um you probably need to do it with like the same tester person to like you would uh, you get to like your max heart rate and everything's kind of hurting for a little bit anyways but to be at like the level yours. 10, but one of the one of the um doctors or uh some guy at a running raleigh runners something it's like a pt slash running gym they've got all the all the things in there but it's it's basically like where uh a bunch of runners go to get tested and buy new shoes awesome. and stuff like that um but you can do them on a bike i feel like a bike though i've never done it on a bike bike just doesn't seem as challenging i don't know how it's got to be hard to get your heart rate to a max heart rate just pedaling it, your legs, like not on an the aerodyne, aerodyne on a bike. I think you do it on the aerodyne better than a bike, you know, like, but, but yeah, it, like, how do you increase the difficulty on, on an air, uh, on a regular bike? Like, how did do, do you slow oh, yeah. it down? Like, like no. that's how they do it on the, on the treadmill yeah, so no. on there forever is the incline, but yeah. I don't, I don't know how they do it on a bike. I've never had that one. I've actually never, done, never done on the bike either, but yeah, they, I mean, they could re- incre- increase the resistance on the bike, you know, every couple of minutes, it just gets yeah. more and more resistance as opposed to like having like to pedal faster. Bike. Yeah. But yeah, I've never done it on a bike. I've, I've only done VO2 to max testing on treadmill. Yeah. I'm done with the mile run though. I, I can't do it anymore. I could do it. Why? I enjoy it. I still run. I think we talked about this a little bit a couple of weeks ago. Um, I feel like if, if I put in like a month at a track, so the last two miles that I've run, six eighteen and six nineteen, like back to back testing, yeah. essentially that's a plateau. Um, I can get better at the sports specificity of going to a track four days a week, running four hundreds, pacing it out to exactly like one twenty five, one twenty seven, one twenty seven. Hold on for dear life <laughs> on lap four. Like I, I could. I could go do that, but it just doesn't align with life. I don't, I don't have a track that I can consistently get to schools back in session. So like all the soccer kids are at the, at the tracks now, or like the soccer field oh, yeah. in the middle of the tracks. Um, so it's the, in order to get where I want to go, it is going to take more of my life away than I'm willing to give. It's to cause you're too good goal that, um, you're just naturally so good at it, man. It's like, so yeah, you would, for you to get better, you're going to have to train like a dang, you know, pro or something. Yeah. Like all the training I've done right now is roughly like go run a quarter mile hill, which is like outside my house. Like I can just, I'm looking at the start line right now. Um, and then run around my neighborhood that has an uphill and a downhill. So like yeah. I can, I can bomb the downhills. Like I've run the 0.93 mile loop in 554 but I'm also just really good at running that loop now. 
which is yeah. kind of like what I need to do to get to six minutes or I feel like right now I'm in good enough shape to run like a 609, but it would take, um, if I, if I ran it, it very intelligently, but to get the last 10 seconds off, like in, in the year, I essentially shaved 12 seconds. Yeah. So That's what happens when you're so another 10 yeah. seconds off. That is just sports specific, getting to a track. And it's like when you listen to, uh, Usain Bolt talk about the hundred meter. It sounds like he's racing like a mile, but it it's because he knows the exact number of steps, exactly how he's supposed to feel at those steps. Like every single meter along the way, he knows exactly what's going on. Um, you just got to get to that point to be able to, for my, for my current fitness, <laughs> it becomes like yeah. a very exact process of just getting reps. And I can't, I can't do that. It's easy for me, my because my VO two max is so poor. I could just if I move, it's a good thing. <laughs> Dude, you're still so jacked though, man. You still I'm, clean three hundred pounds, can't you? I'm I'm getting there, especially like my power is up, so everything is trending good. All my health is like, which is, you know, I heard Andy say for this would be good for our listeners is like Andy was talking how how closely like longevity and health for people like us is the same as it is for peak performance is like, you know, we need to focus on maximizing all the areas of our life to live a long time and to feel good. And whereas like the athletes that we work with, uh, the high end athletes to maximize their athletic ability, it's the same exact thing. It's like yeah. maximize these areas, you know, anaerobic, aerobic. So mm -hmm. VO2 max. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel like when you're young and you're an athlete, if you want to have any amount of success in a sport, you should be taking your strengths and really capitalizing on them and making them as, as good as possible. If you're already naturally strong, if you want to win at something, pick a strength sport and get really, really, really strong, and then you'll be a right. winner, right? right? But as far as like health and longevity goes, it's kind of the opposite, where as you get older, you really should pick the thing that you're the worst at and, and shore that up, bring that right. up, and then that's the thing that's actually going to help you like live a longer, more balanced life. Uh, I've, 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 I've heard a similar analogy in business. Like if you want to make a lot of money in business, you should, you should take something that you're really good at in our case, like health and fitness things, and then make a business out of that. You're already really good at it. Go be the best at it. And then you'll be successful. But like in your relationships, like your relationship with your wife or, or best friends or whatever, then it's like, whatever your deficiencies are, then That's showing up your on. deficiencies will, 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 will minimize the amount of conflict in your relationship. So relationship wise, you should show up your deficiencies, but like money and wealth wise, you should capitalize on your strengths. I feel like it's like that for young athletes versus older non-athletes that are just looking to be healthy and, and have uh, good energy, longevity, and just feel good. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, even like you talk about the athlete it just depends on the person. Like, you know, like if you, a decathlete, well, then that would probably be the exact perfect program for longevity because they got to be strong, fast, got to have anaerobic, aerobic. And so it just depends on the athlete. But even if it's like a, um, if you think about a mile, one mile sprinter, I guess runner, I don't call him a sprinter, but mm -hmm. the way you improve that person is the same way you improve like an adult. It's like looking at their VO2 max and seeing anaerobic, aerobic, you know, lactate threshold and all those things. And so, yeah, it was, it was, he was one of his newer podcasts was talking about longevity and performance. Oh yeah. It was the reason why he named his, his podcast perform. It's like these things that work for the, yeah. the best athletes in the world work for old men like me and you, you know, well, you guys aren't old, yeah. but old men like me. So. <laughs> yeah. We actually did a show on longevity, maybe like a year ago or somewhere, somewhere around there. And we were talking a lot about this and it was when at the seminar down in Dallas, like the very first slide that Galpin had was essentially comparing the goals of performance versus longevity. And he was like, basically the only things in there's like a very few number of things in here that are different. And one of them is like joint pain. Yeah. <laughs> like the goals of longevity, joint pain. Like he was comparing it to kind of like the Olympic athletes because the Olympics were going on. He was like, if your goal is to live forever, joint pain is probably very important because you don't want to just live in pain. He's like, if you're an athlete no. and you're competing for a gold medal, Check joint pain is that's par for the course. Just get used wow. to it. Like yeah. if you're pushing the limits that hard. Um, 
But when you start to look at all of the performance metrics, they're also the exact thing, same things that are going to allow you to live a long time and perform at a high level for as long as you possibly can. Totally. So, um, yeah. I remember talking with Julian Pinot many years ago. Oh, yeah. Julian Pinot? Yeah, I do. Where, where is that guy now? But yeah, totally. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a long time. He's he's a great dude. Yeah. Um. We're we're out of his gym. Um. Dude, probably where is Julian? 16, he was like 17. Yeah. Wildly ahead of the game. California. Oh, yeah. he, guy. He, he really yeah. was. Yeah. He was like so far ahead, and I haven't thought about him in five yeah, years. He, he was on the show before. Totally. And that was like a massive show. That was like right before I came on. That was a massive show. The uh, was it? Yeah. Chris and he, I can't remember. There was something you guys had like the full crew out there doing a people were throwing up, pushing sleds. <laughs> yeah, we did throw up out there. That was like his yeah, like we... that was like Julian Pinot's like breakout thing. Everybody was talking about that show. CJ Martin, didn't he start working with CJ Martin and Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he did. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, he uh he introduced us to to bear crawl sled pulls. I'd never really done like heavy bear crawl sled pulls, where yeah. what he would do is he would put a bunch of 45s on the sled. And you would you would bear crawl as hard as you could, but you'd only be able to pull it like ten feet. And then he then you're you're basically stuck. And he would remove a forty five, and you'd be able to like barely pull it another ten feet. And then he would remove a forty five. It was like it was like oh, these God. drop sets of bear crawl sled pulls where it was heavy enough where you could barely pull it at all. And then then he would slowly make it lighter and lighter and lighter. And yeah, I told I totally threw up in that parking lot that day. <laughs> Oh my I, was, I, was, I was not prepared for that. I mean, I, and I and again, I I was in great shape back then, and still that got me good. I, I really enjoyed it. Well, it's actually, one of his main points, yeah. one of his main points was like CrossFit kind of originally started as like this uh, this idea that you would go a hundred percent all out on one workout, and then you'd call it a day. And then it slowly kind of got away from that over time, where where people weren't really reaching true anaerobic threshold every single day. They were now they were just training for a sport, which of course there's advantages to that too. But he was like, every once in a while, you need to make yourself as tired as you possibly can, like in yeah. in, a, in a short bout. So there's like airdyne sprints or assault bike sprints or whatever you want to call them these days, um, and sled pulls is definitely one of those things where if you want to go 100 percent all out effort for you know 30 seconds and end up throwing up in a parking lot, then heavy sled pulls can get it done. <laughs> and so he absolutely he us to that. And it was, it was a great time. I, I, I actually miss doing stuff like that. I haven't done a lot of sled work in a long time. I feel like Andy talks a lot about that now about like, he's not so much into the whole, like, um, like zone two cardio long, you know, he's more into like the anaerobic, the sweep your butt or, you know, combination of the two. So I agree. I like that. I, I would rather kill me for 10 minutes than let me miserable for 30 minutes. So, yeah. I, I, I found more of a balance of that over time where I used to be, I used to be heavy on the high intensity side of things. I used to only do like high intensity interval training and and then just kind of general weight training type things and didn't do almost any slow, long duration zone two cardio type work. Um, now it's a little more balanced where my, my ideal setup, if I'm not counting jujitsu as cardio, which it, it totally is at some it level, is, of yeah. course. Um, but if I'm just doing quote unquote cardio work, um, I love doing assault bike sprints. That's probably like my, my yeah. low impact, um, easy thing that I can do. It doesn't take a lot of time. We get a lot of bang for your buck. And if I'm trying to like hit max heart rate, say once a week, like that's the easy way to do it where there's Agreed. almost no possibility of me injuring myself or exacerbating any pain that I already have from jujitsu or wherever else. And then as far as like zone two cardio, you know, just doing something very light for an hour or more. Uh, I've become more friendly to that over time purely because I just want to be outside. Agreed. Yeah. Like, I just want to go, go for, for an easy run, bike ride yeah. or for like a ruck or, or, you know, or of course, like just going for a jog. Because I just spend too much time in, in my cave. I'm podcasting right now with all the lights off in this room with a light in my face, with all my windows yeah. closed, because that's what yeah. makes for the best lighting on Zoom. You know, it's like you got to get out in the garage. I know. I need. I need to. I need to get outside. We all need a garage sure. like yours. So, uh, this is I why, could do this is why I, I sit out here just so I could stare outside and look at sunlight all day. I mean, I that's the only zone, yeah. zone two I'm going to do is like go for a rut, go for a walk. You know, and the thing about the airdyne too is like my running because of you know hips and other issues. If I go hard on a run, I've 
odds are it's going to give me, you know, I'm going to hurt because my gait's not perfect. That's another yeah. thing people listening, you know, if you're, if you're running, you know, if you're not really efficient as a runner, you know, if you're going to go and turn it up a little bit, it's probably not the, it's not the, um, I would movement. I would choose air dime would be better yeah. or even like a, um, what's the, the uh, climber, you know, climbers uh, would be good. Versa climber. Versa climber. Yeah. Versa climber. But yeah, I've running, never really done like a hard up. set of of intervals on a Versa climber. I've like played with them before, but I've never seriously trained on one before. Oh, for sure I did because Rocky. Remember in the Russian <laughs> Rocky Four? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I did my one fight of my life, I did that thing like rah, like it was the <laughs> Russian guy. Yeah. I was nowhere near the Russian guy, but yeah. it looked cool. I'd, r- I'd rather go run hill sprints. Hill sprints and stairs oh, sprints yeah. are the shit. Yeah. Yes. Again, again, too, your your um, risk of injury uh, injury risk is low yeah. when you're doing things like that because you know it's when you get that max V and you're upright and your you know your risk of hurting a hamstring or even a glute goes up so high, especially for me, you know. Yeah. So, air dive. Dude, I feel like the the uh, the zone two mm-hmm. training, I I really struggle when I hear people are like, and then I sit on the rower for forty five minutes. I'm like, man. Oh, man. This zone two is like the living part. Yeah. You're, you're like just doing Don't stuff. Move. You're yes. in zone two, like doing the dishes, like yes. folding clothes. Like you're like focused <laughs> on something and just move. You're just, you're doing anything except sitting on the couch. No doubt. Or sitting on move. your phone. Like it's just getting up and doing stuff. Get out of your ass. Walk. Yeah, like, play with your kids. Play basketball. Yeah. I feel like that specific thing is like the most overthought like how yeah. do i do it it's like you you literally just live that's yes. it's slowly just transporting blood at a slightly higher level than laying in bed <laughs> like it's it's a very simple yes. process that involves like playing with your kids or uh having a sport outside that you want to go do playing catch like yes it, there, I, I feel like sitting on a rower for 45 minutes or like a uh, a bike trainer at a slow pace is it's it's only the worst it's it's healthy but it's the worst way because there's zero yeah. experiential piece to any of it when that is like you could go for a hike or just no like, chance yeah, like I'm it, doing it that. literally is like the simplest of actions of just going out and playing and then yeah. because you can train it in a specific way when I hear people talking about like sitting on a row or for 45 minutes 45 and monitoring minutes. their heart rate not to go over 130 and not to dip below 115. And I'm like, no way. It's just way, way better ways to go about no doubt. Living, living your life and, and incorporating fitness into it. Go for a walk and call your friends and talk. You know, like there's so many things you could do other than sit on a damn bike for 45 minutes. No chance. Yeah. Like yeah. I'd rather beat I've myself that, up at 12. I've done that a small handful of times where I've gotten on the air dine or I, just the assault bike in my garage and yeah. just slow and steady for an hour. I've done that like three times probably in my <laughs> yeah, life, right. you know, and, yeah. and, and, yeah. And, I'm, and I got done. I'm like, okay, I'm glad I did that. And I only did it because I just, I only had that like exact amount of time where I could train and maybe I hadn't trained in a couple of days and I just needed to do something. And so I just, yeah. so I did, I just did something to check the box, but yeah. it is, it is like not my like preference at all. Yeah, I just go like, do circus outside with my kids. Like I play football with Bear, you know. I play basketball with Rock, uh, with Magnolia. Yeah. We'll just do whatever she at, and I just go in a circuit with them. Like, and it it's so much fun. Before you know it, you got to crush your steps. Had a good time. You're outside. Anything outside for me is what I need. Man, I'm not going outside as much as I should here in the last couple of weeks. I got to get out there. <laughs> Dude, live it, the outside is. I like try and set my whole life. SoCal ruins you, man. Once you once you get the SoCal sun, you're a full yeah. addict. Like that is that is the chronic of life right there. If you can, you miss California. Up, um, I miss. Uh, it's saying I miss California is like, in my opinion, after five years of living in the middle of North Carolina or South, missing San Diego, is like, it's like saying uh, I I miss frat parties. Oh yeah. Where it's like, I kind of miss that time of life, but I have way more valuable right. life things going on right now. Um, but to think that 
owning a gym three blocks from the water. That was John perfect Cena for you at the time. The WWE might roll Hell in and yeah. want to bang some weights around in like your beautiful facility. And it's 73 degrees outside and you haven't had a shirt on for two weeks. <laughs> and you might go surfing at noon in a golf cart. Sick. You know, who knows? Anything's possible, right? That's uh, sick, man. Yeah, those things probably won't happen again in my life, but I also don't go to frat parties anymore either. So I'm pretty I'm cool. I'm curious though with Rapid, how did you guys find, you know, like uh you got Mike Lane and you got uh Chris Perry? Like you got how do you find these dudes? I feel like you know, there's Andy was first. You just like you find the super uh PhDs or something, like the next Chris Perry is a rock star. Savage. And, and savage. At Ford's athlete at my at the clinic he did. Like I was like, man, did you take acting lessons? I mean, that's how good of a presenter he is. And Mike Lane, I got, I'm gonna have him next year. Like, where are you finding these dudes? Like, I've been to plenty of universities and I haven't seen researchers quite like these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're very fortunate at Rapid. Like, we we got a lot of success success very quickly. Obviously, Andy like has the the academic background in addition to all the cool stuff he does with pro athletes and and now with his multiple businesses. You know, Rapid being kind of the primary one. Uh, as we've had more and more success, all the coaches we've been able to hire, they, they all have graduate degrees and a handful of them are like also college professors and they coach at Rapid where they have they have professional teaching experience at a university level. And we actually, you know, one of the core values of Rapid is, is, is learning and teaching. So like we very specifically and intentionally hire people that have professional teaching experience separate from professional coaching experience. So if, if we find people, again, very similar to to Andy, I like, have like high academic experience and then high professional athlete or, or coaching experience. Like those are the people that we look for. And those Smart. people know other people that are like that. Like they all hang out in the same circles. And so a lot of the people that we've recruited over time um, have been recommendations from the, you know, from the people that already work with us. So Perry was a great example. He, he invited Mike Lane to, to the mix because he just knew that, uh, that Mike's a gangster and that we're He's looking for high quality people. And um, you know, Mike Lane's a great fit in the company. Oh, dude, we work so well together. It's so much fun. And it is. It's like it's a culture of really smart guys who can understand the practicality of things. Yeah, I feel like forever, you know, like you know, two decades ago, you had the research side, and then you had the coaches, and then you had the athletes, and they were communicating really well. But you guys have brought it all together in one spot. You have people who've been great athletes, coach great athletes, and are super smart and understand the academia, which – that makes for an incredible culture, and it's which is why it's fun. Like you don't even make me go to the to the meetings, and I just want to because it's cool. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> it's fun hanging out with those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. dude, we we dig having you there. Yo, for for people that don't know this, we we announced this at the beginning of the show that you were working with us now. But uh, so you're you are specifically working with some of our professional professional athletes that need to get stronger. You are. Former strongest man in the world over here and one of the best weightlifting coaches in the country. Like who better to help professional athletes get strong than Travis Mash? So we have we have all of our various specialists and our kind of our our you know our our main coaches, but then we're bringing you in specifically as a a strength specialist, uh, just for those few people that need someone like with your your very specific uh, area of expertise here. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Mike is like it's it's super fun to work with. We we mix really well. And the things I don't feel as confident in, he's got it. It's been fun so far, for sure. Yeah. The um, After coming out of your master's degree program, um, do you find a lot of value? And I, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but uh, do you still get to feel like you're learning from them, seeing as they're kind of like who would have been your professors when you were at school? Yeah. That's what's fun about it. Yes. And I, and I miss that a little bit about, you know, little Ryan, because I was always around like, you know, if, if some research article came out, my professor is going to be like, Oh, did you hear about this new thing? And so we we're, we're on the, we're the, like the front lines of learning all the new things that were coming out. And so I miss that. I still continue. Yeah. Andy's a big part of my continue. And I, I listen to him all the time as I, as I travel, but it's cool to be there with those guys like Mike Lane and Chris Perry, uh, especially they're my favorites. Those two guys have just 
getting what they're working on, what's new, like, and they communicate yeah. it so well. That's the weird thing about those two guys. It's like, they're the clearest of like communicating, like what most people would consider complex. They can make it seem very, you know, I guess easy or easy to understand. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's also cool about the clients that they are um, asking questions or like, nobody's like really coming to us right off the bat we're not like the, the first option they've been in like yeah the performance or longevity space for a while um and either not gotten the answers or looking to take things to the next level looking for a more comprehensive solution um but the questions that they end up coming up with i feel like are much more complex and yeah. need coaches that are able to meet them at that level versus um like a like a basic macro oh yeah like a today, basic mm -hmm. calorie conversation today was a great yeah. example of like um you know i'm not naming names but like we were talking to one of the athletes and they were just you know they're so complex in their in their can i say what can i say a sport is that okay yeah sure. yeah so they're fighters and so they're uh, specifically boxers so they have think about how complex their training regime is you know they have to spar you know then they have to you know then they have their you know mitts and they have their bag work you know then they have their running their cardio and then they have the strength training and they have all these complex pieces and so and then as a boxer you got to have an incredible obviously vo2 max is super important but then you have to yeah. have a really strong anaerobic system and so like because you know when it's time to go they got to be able to turn it on and, and knowing when to do what and so when we test them and we can take out the guessing like today it was just, i felt i saw a guy's face relax for the first time when he's like you know i gotta do this and i gotta do this and we explained to them this is the part you're incredibly good at don't sweat that that's already here this is the part to target and you could just see him feel so calm and like oh like they got me i don't have to guess this complex puzzle is solved it was it was a cool feeling. It just happened right before the show, so it was yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you got your boxers, but we also have like a ton of golfers, professional baseball players, MMA fighters, and on and on on the professional athlete side of things. But really, the vast majority of people that are rapid clients are more on like the business side, like yeah, like like wealthy entrepreneurs, executives, investors, etc. A handful of celebrities, but kind of mostly on the business side, and people that have a hundred million dollar company or more. We have very wealthy clients that have very high expectations. And so to your point about that, our coaches like, like they expect our coaches to have a graduate degree or, or, you know, at a minimum a master's, but like probably a PhD as well. Um, or they, they don't want to work with someone who's just like a random personal trainer at a wow. random gym. Like they yeah. want to work with a, with a, with a PhD who has like professional athlete experience that's taking all of that knowledge and education and, and pouring it into them. That way they can have the highest quality service available. Sure. They don't want anybody guessing either. But unfortunately, you find so often, like you go to California, and sometimes the ones who are training the stars, you know, aren't the people that we have at RAD. But they're sadly just somebody who met somebody who met somebody, and now they're coaching these people, and they have no idea what they're doing. And But the poor, you know, the clients have no idea that who they're, who they're with is just really not very smart. But yet they come to us. It's a whole different ball game. It's you know we're going to make sure we test them in all the areas, and you got the physical therapy. That's crazy. So you test, make sure they have any shoulder issues, hip issues, ankle issues. Like it just literally, and we all communicate in the same place. I love how you've done that, Doug. Yeah, the systems guy, where everybody can look and see. Okay, this guy has to work on this thing. He's really good at this thing, so makes it so easy. And we're all talking, and we're not. And we're not guessing or doing something we're not supposed to or stepping over the line, trying to pretend I'm a physical therapist when I'm not, which happens mm -hmm. way too much in my industry. So people <laughs> pretending. I don't, I don't understand that. Why a strength conditioning coach wants to pretend to be a PT, like go to PT school. I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to mess with rubber bands and stretching people. You know, I want to get them jacked, but yeah, <laughs> sure. We all got our place. We yeah i mean again we have very wealthy clients that have very high expectations and so like they want data-driven decisions so like we spend a ton of time doing data collection and, and assessments and whatnot they're usually older as well you know you, you rarely run a hundred million dollar company if you're a kid like it does happen to some people but but most of our people are there in their you know 40s and 50s we'll say and 
once you're in your 40s and 50s, as we all know, like that's when shit starts getting achy. And you yes. got a shoulder thing that's been there for 20 years. And and you, you know, you don't want to get a hip replacement because you can kind of feel it coming. And so having a yeah, physical yeah. therapist on staff to to ensure that uh A, we're we're you know accounting for any past surgeries and, and injuries and what have you. We're not exacerbating any current pain you have and making it worse. And and ideally we're we're fixing current problems and making that pain go away. And then yes. they're, they're coordinating with, with our strength coaches to make sure that whatever the training program is, is, is in line with, with the physical therapy plan. Like everyone has to work together in order to have a great result. Yeah. It's really cool. Even with Mike and I, like I, he's uh, the workout I just sent to one of our athletes. He looks it over then he fits his, you know, he's doing more of the uh, overall picture. He's doing more of the, the aerobic anaerobic work and just, you know, plus I put in warm ups. But then he'll look and make sure that they kind of go with what everybody else is said with PTs, especially. So it's mm-hmm. it's crazy. It's like a system. It's so well oiled too. Like everybody knowing where they go and like when we meet every week, we meet with our clients every single week, and we got this checklist of stuff. And Mike is good about holding them accountable too. So like he's like, man, you got to fill this out before the sh- you know before we get down here, so we don't have to ask these questions and we can do more things. It's really. And then they're like, even though, you know, they're paying us, they're like, oh, you're right. Got to get on top of it. But I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot how to really handle people online as if they're almost better than if they're in front of us. Yeah. Do one other interesting kind of distinguishing factor with what we do is like a lot of people, if they're seeking out a personal trainer or a nutritionist, they're like, I'm 30 pounds overweight. I want to lose 30 pounds. I'm going to go get a specialist to help me lose 30 pounds. It's like they kind of already know what they need to do. Yeah. But. A lot of our clients, they're already in good shape. We're a health optimization company. People come to us when they're already doing pretty well, and they actually really don't know what they should be doing. They are—they probably already train to eat well and sleep well, and they, they already do many things, but they're coming to us to say, hey, what should I be working on right now? I kind of already work on a lot of things, and I already feel pretty good, but what, what really should I be working on, all things considered, because... I don't actually know what is going to move the needle with my long-term health. Yeah. And they're only going to figure that out by collecting a bunch of data and doing like a comprehensive analysis and then, right. you know, rank ordering all of your physiological needs in a hierarchical way. And then we will tell them, this is what you need to work on in order to, you know, increase your, we call it your TPP, your true physiological potential. Yeah. That was, that was the conversation we had today is like this guy who I'm talking about has like, a, he has like his VO2 max is over 50. So it's, it's really good. And it's over 50 now. And he's kind of like in an off season where he hasn't been training well. So he's just like naturally really good at, yeah. he's like, he's like Anders. He's naturally really, his VO2 max is beyond most people, but then, but his um, anaerobic capacity is not like his ability to be in the eighth round and be able to like turn it up turn the heat up isn't and so yeah. so we can tell him like bro let's focus on this aspect of the energy system you know answering his questions he's had so many so many years it's, it was really fun today yeah it's awesome yeah coach trap smash they work in the people find you rabbit health yeah. optimization right yeah, ra- yes. If you want me to coach you, go to Rabbit Health. And so if you uh, want to get read my free articles, go to masterleague.com or go to jimware.com, of course, for my latest articles. So, but if you want to work with me, go to these guys. There you go. We'll get you jacked out of your mind. <laughs> Doug Larson. <laughs> you bet. Travis, dude. Uh, friends of many years, of course, long time shrug host at this point. Uh, just stoked to have you officially on the Rapid yeah. team, man. This, this, me this too. Is a- Fantastic news. Super pumped. Hell yeah, man. Uh, find me on Instagram, Douglas E. Larson. I am Anders Varner, at Anders Varner, and we are Barbell Shrugged, Barbell underscore Shrugged. Make sure you get over to RapidHealthReport.com. That is where our friend Timothy Jones, client at Rapid Health Optimization. Uh, there's a case study up that you can see how he cut his cholesterol in half, got totally ripped in the process, and you can access, access that free case study over at RapidHealthReport.com. Friends, we'll see you guys next week.